Okay, welcome back to uh, part three of this bonus uh, video series. Uh, we kind of left off, we did a little bit of the hair, so let's go ahead and jump on in and uh, we'll discuss what I'm doing here. So, I'm just kind of working on the hair. Uh, this is kind of a fun little area, so just kind of uh, have a good time with it and um, uh, just go wild. This is where you could get really creative. So. Boy, it sounds like a jet engine in the other room. Uh, sorry about all the background noise, uh, but uh, it turns out my family lives here too, so... <laughs> Sometimes uh, noises end up happening while I'm in the middle of recording. But uh, what can you do? Uh, it's about... Uh, 10:30 at night, so uh, I think everybody's getting ready to call it an evening. But uh, dang it, I want to finish this uh, uh, portrait pattern and get her done with. So, and then uh, I'll try compressing it this evening, and at least have uh, uh, one or two things to show you uh, in the morning, and. Uh, That way you could kind of see this this portrait come together and come to life. I love watching other people work. Um, I'd imagine you do too if you actually made it this far in the video. Mm, feel free to uh, throw on some uh, music instead of listening to me babble. Uh, every once in a while I throw out a nugget of information, but uh, at least music is a little bit more interesting. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, finesse the hair a little bit. Um, let's pull that over. And let's go ahead and clean that up like that. And then we'll separate that out. See, there's a lot of cool shapes you could do with the hair. Uh, white hair and um, bald heads are a little trickier to do. Uh, a lot of times you end up having to do some uh, veining type techniques or line drawings to indicate uh, or at least hint toward the general well I like the shape of the scalp for uh, those that do not have hair and uh, those with uh, white hair or wispy hair uh, you got to do kind of an outline of the hair to uh, kind of uh, hint to the fact that there is uh, something there but uh, it does become tricky but it could be done so I'm just kinda I'm really just kinda making it up as I go uh, you know the base pattern does give you a general idea uh, so you just end up picking the peninsulas you like and uh, the lakes and uh, just kinda having fun with it Uh, Shatner's hair is going to be a little tricky. You're going to find a lot of these little lakes and I guess that's really what kind of uh, makes him unique is uh, his uh, hair piece here. It definitely has its own texture which is actually kind of kind of a lot of fun to uh, play around with so Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that off, and then we'll go ahead and start a new one over here, I believe. Now, when doing hair, or any of these other areas, uh, but especially hair, uh, 
be careful not to paint yourself in a corner. You know, I remember that uh, having lakes in your uh, pattern, or uh, my lakes, not lakes, uh, having islands in your lakes or little floaties uh, in your pattern is a very bad thing. Because uh, if you cut it out that way, uh, you're going to get a, uh, a pile of uh, wood chips on the bottom of your shop floor. So you got to be real careful about not putting in any islands and making sure you uh, bridge everything over. And uh, at first it may seem a little uh, daunting, but uh, before long uh, uh, you'll be able to kind of keep track of uh, many of these shapes and uh, you could automatically see whether or not there's going to be problem areas. So I'm going to bridge that thing over and uh, create something unique there. Uh, this is kind of long and um, long and dangerously thin, but you know what? I think I might just go ahead and strengthen up this area a little bit more and leave that peninsula the way it is because that looks kind of cool. And it's these little things like that that uh, really impress your friends. So, you know, throw in a magic trick every once in a while and make them wonder how you got it like that. Okay, so it's starting to kind of come together a little bit. Uh, let's work on this area here. I think I think this will be kind of a fun little area. Let's see, what are we at? Six minutes? That's not so bad. And let's go ahead and bring that up like that. So let's go ahead and fill this area in. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the hair. Uh, this little piece is pretty important, so I don't really want to just leave it in the middle of nowhere hanging uh, because like I said I don't want to thread that um, that scroll saw blade so I'll just go ahead and connect that and maybe beef this thing out a little bit more like this and we'll create a little nib there and kinda finesse this peninsula a little bit and clean this area up Okay. You know what I might do? I'll see how big this file is. I might not be able to post this file in the forums. But if it isn't too terribly big, maybe I'll zip it up. But if it isn't too terribly big, I might just include uh, my project file uh, for you guys to kind of dissect if you're interested. Um, I'll also include a uh, the copy of the portrait that I ended up creating. I'm going to bridge that over, or not bridge it over, but connect those two lakes. But uh, I'll go ahead and uh, post uh, my finished portrait so you could kind of compare it to yours if you'd like. Um, if mine doesn't match yours, it doesn't mean that yours is wrong. Uh, there's no wrong way of doing this. Uh, it's your own interpretation. It's your own approach. Um, mine isn't right. Uh, not to say that it's wrong either. Uh, it's just the way I happen to interpret this picture. So, uh, certainly don't take my pattern as uh, the end-all approach because it certainly isn't.
Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and connect that up. Got to leave a nice little space in here for some bridging. Let's go ahead and move that over just a tish. Well, I'm trying to keep an eye on the time because this hair is actually taking a little bit longer than I was expecting. I guess just because there is a lot of um, unusual shapes in here and it's exciting and all, but it does take time. feel like I'm turning into the Bob Ross of uh, pattern designing. Talking about the happy little hares and finding their homes and making up stories. Such happy little hares. I guess the big question is is anybody following me up to this point? Because it is an awful lot of information and it's a little dry. <laughs> but if you are following me uh, up to this point and listening to me babble, uh, you have more patience than I do. Okay, so we're just kind of just kind of making things up here. Remember your bridges. Make sure you have uh, plenty of support for whatever uh, peninsulas you make. Like I said, mo I'm using mostly a number five. In fact, I haven't really even switched anything smaller than a number five. If I really need some really tight detail I'll go to a number three but that's a little outside my comfort range for uh, uh, actually sawing. So I figure if it's the width of a, a number five uh, brush um, it's usually within my skill level to uh, oops, grab the wrong uh, Grab the wrong tool there. Um, but anyway, if it's a, at least a number five, it is within my reach as far as trying to cut this portrait out. Uh, some more experienced pattern, uh, or cutters, I should say, um, might be comfortable with uh, the number three size brush uh, patterns, or patterns made with a number three size brush. But, um, you know, I like to impress my friends, but I don't need to impress them that much. Oh, uh, what are we going to do here? What can we do? Let's see, we could just go ahead and bridge it over here like that. That kind of works, right? So you can kind of see his hair coming along. Coming along real nice. And uh, we're at 13 minutes. That's, uh, boy, I really would kind of, I was kind of wishing I was be a little bit further than I am. I think this is going to go into the fourth video. I hope not. Because that is an awful lot of video to watch. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's go ahead and darken in those areas. 
Let's see if we could just pound through this. I'm trying hard to keep this with just three videos and not too much more. But uh, it's hard to say exactly whether or not I could accomplish that goal. Let's go ahead and get rid of that all together. Let's go ahead and strengthen that bridge a little bit. We gotta fix these. Uh, let's connect this thing because that I don't need two hanging things like that because that's just too much uh, threading. Okay. Now I'm just using a regular old mouse. I use a uh, mouse with a a roller wheel in the middle, and uh, you know that works pretty good for me. Uh, a lot of pattern designers do like those uh, Wicom tablets or the bamboo tablets. Uh, they're kind of like um, they. It looks like a little clipboard or like a little pad which you have a little pencil on, and then you more or less use a pencil or a stylus to um, uh, to draw on this pad, and it controls your your cursor and. Uh, some people actually find that uh, pretty helpful. Um, it takes a little bit uh, to get used to, but uh, the people that do use it uh, really love it. So if you're doing a lot of pattern designing, you might you might consider looking into it or giving it some thought. Um, you don't need one, obviously. I mean, I don't use one, but. Uh, like I said, the people that do use them really tend to love them. So that is something there. Um, let's get rid of that altogether. And that, and these little floaties. And let's go ahead and dark that up. Uh, what other tools might you be interested in? Uh, Obviously, you're going to be wanting a uh, digital camera so you could uh, take uh, uh, pictures, so you could turn them into portraits. Uh, you might consider a scanner, uh, especially if uh, you're pretty good at drawing uh, by hand. Uh, you may want to scan some of your drawings in and create scroll saw portraits or create patterns from, whether or not they're scroll saw portraits or not, are completely up to you. Um, but a uh, scanner is kind of nice, especially if you're trying to bring in other images that weren't in a digital medium to begin with. You could always take it down to a Kinko's or uh, your copy shop and they could put it on disc. It gets a little expensive, but uh, it is possible, so you don't really need one. Um, You know, there's not really a whole lot you need to make patterns, really. Uh, just the desire to do so and uh, the time and energy it takes to put something together, I guess. If you enjoyed this uh, GIMP series, I have a very similar series using Photoshop. Uh, very similar techniques. I take a, uh, a uh, snapshot of a, a person's dog and I create a scroll saw portrait pattern. Uh, like I said, it's very similar to this lesson. Uh, this lesson tends to be a little bit more flushed out and a little bit more uh, structured than the other one that I put together. But uh, that is a good one too. Is what if you're uh, even if you're not using Photoshop. Uh, it kind of it kind of shows you uh what you could do okay 19 minutes i think we could do this and uh finish this off in a half hour or in 10 more minutes maybe i suppose we should take some bets Anyway, go ahead and check out that Photoshop series. Uh, you might also find uh, 
some good information in there and uh, if you're a Photoshop user um, you could uh, learn what you're learning in this GIMP class and apply it to Photoshop just as easy and uh, just use um, uh, the dog portrait uh, series as a uh, basic guideline. Uh, I also teach other programs. Uh, I uh, have a bunch of uh, videos on using Inkscape. Inkscape is a vector-based program, uh, different than uh, GIMP. GIMP is a raster or a bitmap-based program where you're dealing with pixels. Uh, Inkscape is a, a vector program, which means you're dealing with uh, basically mathematical representations of fo uh, pictures, uh, not photographs pictures. Um, really nice thing about it is that uh, you can scale those images without losing um, image quality. And there's a lot to be said for that. You have a little bit more tighter control. Um, you may not be able to do things like portraits or anything like that, but uh, doing some decorative uh, type uh, designs, uh, word art or um, Oh, what have we done? Um, you could do word art, clocks, um, baskets, any number of things. A lot more decorative type of uh, designs you could uh, do with Inkscape. And I do have a few tutorials on that. I'm, uh, I have uh, several tutorials kind of lined up for Inkscape. Inkscape is a lot of fun. It's uh, open source software, uh, just like... Um, GIMP and um, so it's absolutely free and it's actually pretty powerful so be sure to check those out and uh, if you have any suggestions for uh, videos you like to see put together just let me know I'll, I'll create whatever uh, whatever you guys are interested in uh, if there's a program you want me to cover. Um, it kind of depends on the availability of the program. If it's a free program, obviously I could afford free. Uh, Photoshop I already own, so I could do Photoshop tutorials pretty well. Um, I probably won't, won't do anything for CorelDRAW. Uh, Steve Good over at ScrollSaw Workshop uh, has a lot of great tutorials on CorelDRAW so um, he's really the expert with that so if you have any questions you could shoot uh, see if he could put something together for you uh, I'm just not familiar with uh, CorelDRAW I'm sure it's very similar to uh, programs like GIMP or Illustrator but uh, you know he's kind of the uh, CorelDRAW expert so I'll leave that domain to him um, what other programs? I know a little bit about Illustrator, so I could probably do something with that. Uh, I can't imagine there's a whole lot of people using it though, because like Photoshop, it's a very expensive program, and unless you're using it in a professional setting, um, you really, I don't recommend anybody buying it. Uh, use uh, Inkscape instead. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of some of the other programs. Uh, there's a lot of uh, other programs like Coyote uh, or Coyote. I've only played with it once, but I could probably put something together there if there's interest. Um, there's a lot of web applications that uh, work similar to uh, GIMP that I could probably put something together for. And uh, there's just wide variety of things. I I, I have a knack for picking up uh, software or picking up programs and learning how to use it. Uh, it comes very easily for me. So you know, if there's something that you'd like to learn how to do, uh, just let me know. I'll I'd be happy to learn how to do what you're looking for and put something together for you.
Okay. 24 minutes. We're getting there. Okay, so I'm just kind of creating these crazy shapes. Let me get rid of that one. Uh, let's play with this one a little bit. This is kind of a fun one to kind of skews off to the side. We'll break it off right here. Let's get rid of those. Okay. Hopefully we can finish this up. I'm getting a little tired myself. A lot of interesting shapes there, so that's really cool. Uh, how much more? Look at that. We're almost done. Okay, let's uh, let's do this one real quick. I'm just going to go ahead and outline this. And I'm just going to really just bring it way the heck up here. This is really cool, the way this works. And then fill it in. Clean up the image a little bit. Make sure we have enough uh, support there. Whoops. Wrong color. Let's go ahead and clean up this image. Let's get rid of all this garbage. Twenty six minutes. Isn't this exciting? It's like watching 24. <laughs> I'm using a 24 reference when I've never actually watched the show. Okay, we'll just, we'll leave this as his own separate separate lake here. Let's separate this a little bit and um, let's separate this a little bit and let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and I think we're uh, on to our last islands here. So we'll go ahead and fill that in. Uh, there could have been something a little bit more we could have done with that uh, but uh, I really do want to uh, finish this up in uh, in a few minutes. Let's go ahead and clean up this one. Get rid of that floaty. Okay, and now let's get this island in, or this uh, lake in. This one's kind of a fun one as well. Lots of cool shapes in that one. Pull that around. And let's go ahead and... Clean that up. up some of these areas and let's finish our last island right here it's gonna be our very last island I hope I haven't zoomed out yet but I think this is our last one so we're going to color that in clean up the edges And okay. Zoom out. Hey, that looks like a portrait. Okay, let's uh, do one last thing. Uh, his uh, shirt is just about all black. Uh, let me show you this brand new tool. I'm going to be using the little lasso tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click into here. And uh, basically what I'm doing is making a selection. This area is already black. I'm just going to select an area that I want to make black. 
So since uh, this area over here is black up against this jawline, I'm not too concerned about getting it exactly right. We'll go up to the um, uh, guideline. Uh, we'll click on this guideline. You'll kind of see that it uh, it snaps to the guidelines pretty easily. And then uh, let's go ahead and close that off and you can kind of see this little dotted line. Now I don't use this tool very often but if I come up here to select well, let's see where we can find it. Um, edit. So if you come down to edit fill with foreground color I click that and voila it creates everything black in that little area in that little selection and uh, I'm going to go control shift A to deselect everything and as you can see that uh, uh, leaves uh, that little area we have a little bit of area in this margin I'm just going to go ahead and come over here and grab the little uh, marquee or the square selector and I'm going to select everything over here and I'm just going to hit um, come up here to edit fill with background color and that's going to fill it in with white control shift A to deselect and just like that we have a scroll saw portrait pattern of Captain Kirk himself our good friend William Shatner so I hope you enjoyed this uh, video demonstration I'll check out the size of this uh, of this uh, file and if it's not too large I'll go ahead and post it on uh, scroll saw village and you can download it and uh, take a look at it for yourself um, I invite you to swing by Scrollsaw Village, look for the Village University Forum. You will find all the lessons that led up to this uh, video demonstration of the uh, portrait pattern. And uh, you'll find out exactly how to go about creating a portrait pattern, how to create the base pattern, and all that other good stuff. Um, next time we're going to have uh, the very last lesson is basically how to check your work and how to export your image. Uh, so you can share it with others. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video demonstration. Uh, swing by Scroll Saw Village. Uh, join us in the forums. Uh, if you enjoyed this uh, series, um, I invite you to uh, swing by and uh, share some of your talents with the rest of us and post some of your patterns to the pattern library. Uh, we love seeing new patterns and uh, it really is a thrill when you get to see one of your patterns being cut. Uh, this uh, really is a production of uh, Scroll Saw Goodies. Uh, you can visit us over at scrollsawgoodies.com uh, where you'll find more tips, tricks, tutorials, and of course free scroll saw patterns. So I invite you to swing on by. Um, I'm going to call her good. It's 32 minutes, almost 33 minutes in. So I think you've had enough. So until next time, happy scrolling.